We have the DM group team um, here to uh, support the conversation and to answer any questions that you all have. So we're really excited to get started. We don't want to, you know, take up more time than necessary. So let's go ahead and get to it. So just to go over some housekeeping rules, um, we want to make sure that you all are engaged and um, you know feel comfortable sharing. So feel free to introduce yourself in the chat. Um, you can include information about your school district, your state, who you are with your district and so forth. Um, any questions you have, please put them in the chat box. We'll make sure to answer them throughout the uh, session. And then we'll make sure to send over some nice little gifts after the um, round table has concluded. Um, that will include a recording of the session as well as your scheduling guide. Um, so yeah, uh, we're excited to um, give you that information. And I just wanna take a minute to share a little information about DM Group before we get started. I know a lot of you are very familiar with the product, very familiar with the company, um, but there are some who may not know, you know, um, who we are. So District Management Group is an education management um, company, and we work to serve schools all over the country. So we try to use, um, you know, best practices and research to, not we don't, not we try, but we do use best practices and research um, to guide our support with districts. Um, and we're actually celebrating 20 years of supporting schools across the country. So we're really excited about that um, and happy to have you be a part of that as well. And bear with me because sometimes my um, mouse gets a little stuck. So, but anywho, here's just a list of um, all of the districts that we partner with. Um, we work with very large districts down to, you know, um, your more rural and uh, small uh, school districts and schools as well. So we work with a wide range of people. And this is just an overview of the um, services that we offer schools. So we have our DM learning, um, we have our DM consulting, which if you haven't heard about that, please, you know, find out more information. I'm happy to help. Alice is happy to help. Um, these are great supports for our uh, school leaders as well as district leaders. And then DM schedules is also a part of that offering, um, package of offerings that we provide school districts. And that's what we're gonna you know, dive into more today. We also have our breakthrough results program. Um, it's driven by making sure that teachers and students are empowered um, through you know, best practices in the classroom. So if you want any more information about that, please feel free to reach out as well. Let me check the chat really quickly. Okay, good, I'm glad people are using the chat. All right, so, um, I wanted to go ahead and get right to it. So here are the folks that will be leading the discussion for today. So first off, we have uh, Stephen O'Toole. He's a wonderful assistant superintendent in the Great Valley School District. We're so happy to have him here today. Um, he's a wonderful client of ours. We've been working with him for a while now in his school district, and we're just excited to have him here to share more about the work that has been um, done you know, with the Great Valley. We also have Michael Cor Micah Corb. He's a principal in Barrington, 220 school district. Um, he actually attended the summit this, this year, um, and it was wonderful to have him speak about his work with us um, as well. Um, and then we have Alice Light. Alice, do you want to jump in and introduce yourself? <laughs> sure. Hi, everybody. Good morning or good afternoon, wherever you are. Um, it's so nice to meet you all. My name is Alice Lai. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the director of K-12 Scheduling Solutions here at the District Management Group. I started out my career as a 10-year elementary school teacher teaching fourth and fifth grade, and I was also a principal for five years as well. Um, I love all things scheduling. It didn't start out that way. I uh, said yes the first time my principal asked me to build my school schedule, and it was a lot of post-its and Excel spreadsheets and you name it, and I've probably tried it. And we always say here at District Management Group, you know, creating schedules, it's not a mystery, right? Like it's a puzzle that can't be solved, right? It might be a Rubik's Cube puzzle that you get one side, one color, you try to get the other side, it messes up your original side. So we know that the puzzle of scheduling can be solved. Our whole approach is around designing efficient and effective ways to do so easily in a fraction of the time. So for those of you who aren't familiar with our programs or are here to learn more, we're really excited to dive in and hear from two of our district partners about their experience and their learnings from using our tools. Thank you, Alice. That was wonderful. And then you have me, little old me, um, your client development specialist. I'm here to support all things um, DM schedules as well as district management group. Um, had a 
many, many years in education, served many roles from coaching um, to working with our ESL students. Um, and it was a wonderful experience. So I, I did try to avoid scheduling at all costs, but you know, here I am. So <laughs> here we go. Oh, so I want to get into um, our presenters today. So I'd like to start with uh, Stephen O'Toole. I want to give him a second to introduce himself and kind of get us started with, you know, sharing more about his experience uh, with DM schedules. And and I also want to let you all know that we have our VP of product development, Richard Bayard, who is going to support, hi Richard, <laughs> who's going to support that conversation by uh, giving you all some visuals um, to see um, while Stephen is presenting, um, you know, the work that was done in, in Great Valley uh, School District. So uh, Stephen, you can take it away. Great. Thanks, Charity. Uh, good morning and afternoon to all of you uh, in attendance. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, share with you our experiences with the DM scheduling. Uh, just a quick, quick, brief uh, story about us in Great Valley. Uh, I am in my 27th year in education, started in Great Valley as an elementary teacher, uh, moved into coaching roles at the time in technology, as well as instruction and then professional development then was an elementary principal in charge of data achievement and then um, technology and things to that effect. And then now assistant superintendent. And so back in, I want to say uh, close to 2016, we attended a session uh, of the DMG group uh, presenting to the Downingtown Area School District, which we are a suburb of Philadelphia, Malvern, Pennsylvania. So uh, Downingtown Area School District is a neighbor of ours. And during that meeting, uh, they had presented about looking at schedules to help us or help districts in the sense of looking at staff utilization. And so the superintendent at the time uh, asked me to look into uh, our practices and to determine whether or not we had done work previous years uh, around elementary schedule in particular, looking at having core extension, looking at things that we were doing for our, to support our students. But we started to recognize that there might have been sort of that uh, that atrophy when you you put something in place and then as time goes on, new leaders come in. Sometimes there's that process that needs to take a a different look or at least an outside objective look. So we signed on to have uh, consultants come out and work with us really to then identify what were our goals, what were our purpose of our scheduling, what do we what do we um, really want to see in our schedules that maybe uh, we wanted to hold on to, as well as the constraints of our scheduling. You know, when you have a collective bargaining agreement with the teachers union, there are constraints. So we had to look at that. And we sat in a room basically for two days to design, um, and I love that picture. It's like I'm in mid sentence. It's like an action picture. It's like here we go. Uh, um, anyway, uh, so <laughs> um, we decided to get together, and really, we started to notice that we had discrepancies. Even though we thought we had, we have four elementary schools. Uh, we thought our four elementary schools were very consistent, and we found they were not. Uh, as time went on, we just found that our uh, schedules had somehow some way, shape, or form were not consistent. The other thing that we found was that we were not sharing staff uh, in a in an efficient and in, in an efficient way. And this was after you know the 2008 financial crisis that we had looked at, but we really didn't get staff, particularly elementary principals, in a room together. Whenever we would add a section in an elementary school, principal say, "Well, I need I need a PE teacher," and we say, "Okay, a point two PE teacher added," and we this person needs an art section, and and so they were just sort of lobbing out as they should their needs. And we were just filling needs at the time without actually looking at how do we best utilize staff shared between buildings, particularly elementary school. Um, and then one of the things that came up, we had some sharing, but just we didn't work collaboratively to balance schedules across four schools. And then we found out that we, we made a commitment that our special area teachers in particular at our elementary school don't like to travel midday. And so in those meetings, we, we made a commitment to allow so that we have a six day rotational cycle in our elementary schools to say that we want them to go to another school, but on a given day so that they know on days one, three, and five, they may go to this school on days two, four, and six, they go on this school, go to this school. And then they're there the whole day. They're not traveling past practice for us has been that any staff member who travels has to have half an hour travel time 
even for those staff members uh, who are on, in essence, our same campus. We have a middle school and a high school that share a campus. It takes less than six minutes to walk from the middle school to the high school. However, we still provide a half an hour of travel time. Uh, at the elementary levels, we do have some distance as the map showed of our elementary, like our map, we are pretty wide geographically. It could take up to 15 minutes to even get from one elementary school to another. So we do build in that time. Uh, but we, so we made a commitment that that was also a waste of instructional time. You know, when you have teachers traveling between various buildings to give them a half an hour. And if they, we had some, um, uh, some teachers who sometimes were going to two different schools within a day, that's an hour of instructional time that is lost. So we really started to recognize that as time went on, as we developed that schedule in 17, uh, our first schedule, I believe, was the 17-18 school year, we found that our um, utilization of staff, in, we, we were able to utilize staff more efficiently. When teachers retired or if a teacher resigned to go to a different district, we could say, well, okay, now we have, we didn't, furlough anyone, but we were able to say, maybe that's not necessarily a need to hire. So some efficiencies on uh, the scheduling help to look at balancing of our budget and things to that effect. So that's kind of our story. That's our history. And Richard's been a um, partner in all of that for us. Uh, not only, you know, we, I could share not only elementary schedule, we're opening up a five, six center uh, school next year. We went through a whole year long process with Richard to anticipate what the schedule would look like, what staffing needs we would have, because we were reducing uh, a grade level in, in our middle school. We also had to then redesign our schedule for seventh and eighth grade, and Richard worked with us to do that within the scheduling. So we've been sort of K-8, um, even though uh, sometimes, I mean, not high school, but our, our all of the work that we've done with DMG to support has helped us to plan forward to say, how many, what, how are we going to open this school? What's it going to look like? And how many staff might we need? And so it's been instrumental in helping us to guide our planning process to know how many teachers we're going to need to move, et cetera, et cetera. So I'll stop there. And I hope that's been a good summary. <laughs> that was an excellent summary. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And what we'll do too is later um, um, in the conversation, we'll have Richard kind of give you examples by showing of what uh, Stephen was talking about by showing you his schedules. So you can have a visual to support all of that inf good information that he just shared with us. So I want to give uh, Micah a second to introduce himself and share some uh, background information about the work done with his district. So good afternoon, everybody. I don't think, well, it might be morning for you, Alice. Is it still morning? Yeah, see, I knew there was a little, we're in the middle of the day here. So uh, my name is Micah Korb. I'm the principal here at Countryside Elementary School in the Barrington School District. Uh, there is background noise there. It's always a wonderful thing when you're cutting grass. It means there's good weather outside. So they're outside cutting grass. So if you hear mowers going, it's it's for real. Um, but in Pennsylvania, I see that you guys have some sunny weather. So you should have one more day of it because you probably get our weather the next day. So, uh, but anyway, so uh started uh, i'm going to talk a little bit differently just i, I appreciate steven opened us up because he uh, was able to talk about sections and teachers i'm going to talk about curriculum for a moment uh we started with dm group uh, quite a few years ago and i think that the scheduling was in its infancy at that time uh richard's become a close uh, colleague of mine and friend and uh, really has helped me along quite a bit but with that work um i I always tell everyone I wasn't a, a, an early adopter. Um, some people jump on the boat right away. Uh, I actually like scheduling, so I'm I'm one of those get people. Yeah, <laughs> yep, I'm one of those. Uh, I think it's kind of fun to put the puzzle together. Uh, it hasn't been, it never was something that uh, I looked at as a major chore. I thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, so when I got, you know, DM coming in, they're like, you can use our scheduling. I'm like, I don't know if that's as efficient as what I can do. And, but over time, I was like, I'll give it a try. And then as things have evolved, it's been super, super helpful. And uh, it's way better than what I did before. Uh, Excel or Google Sheets or whatever you prefer, um, it, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't have the capacity of what this does. Uh, my staff is, loves it too. Um, they like that they can see everybody's schedule. It's all the same. And uh, back in the days, some of you are probably have been in education as long as I have. If you remember, 
when you made a schedule change, you put a paper copy in everyone's boxes or you sent out the email like, hey, this is the new schedule version 15.5, whatever. Um, there's no longer that. It's an instant update for everyone to view. So that part is amazing. The Our district has been uh, and continues to work through different adoptions for curriculum. And we are, we are on a regular cycle for that. Typically every three to five years or five to seven years, we adopt an, an updated curriculum. We just adopted uh, two years ago a new math curriculum, and then uh, last year adopted a new a new literacy cur curriculum, and now we're in the process of next year adopting a new SEL curriculum. With that, with every curriculum, there is different needs regarding teaching times and the different types of areas uh, within that curriculum that it's you know suggesting for small group or whole group instruction and or different, you know, phonics, literacy, vocabulary, you name it, grammar, all those different components of whatever program you adopt. With that, uh, working with Richard and the team, we're, what we do at the beginning before I even start building the schedule is that we go into, and I'm sure he'll show this, but there's an opportunity for you to assign in your schedule the different areas that everyone needs to have by grade level or as a school. And so you can allocate minutes for that. Um, that created consistency so that every child in the school was receiving the same number of minutes for whatever subject it was. Um, as you as you alluded to earlier, Stephen, everyone's schedule is a little different, right? Because I, I want to teach. I actually like teaching and reading, so I'm going to teach it for 60 minutes. Well, I think I can do it in 50, so I'm going to do it in 50. Well, here at my school, um, the Curriculum is very rigorous, and we try to allocate and make sure that the appropriate amount of time is is provided for each component of that, and so that uh, we put that in the schedule. Uh, as I build those schedules, I share those out with teachers. I get feedback, and we can manipulate and change when those things are occurring throughout the day. However, um, the teachers have found that they – thank you, Richard. The teachers have found that they absolutely love that – the that first they were like i don't know if i was like being told when i was going to teach stuff and then they're like i love that it's already in there i love that i can see it and if i don't, if i want to teach it in the afternoon or a different time i can flip it with you but i love that i have a starting point and i know and i don't have to have that on my plate of when we're going to do stuff so um yes I, i'll talk through i'm sure later we'll talk through a little bit more of the staffing piece of it and how huge that is uh, but i'll just tell you the master schedule piece of it is gigantic because it gets us as a school all knowing when we're going to teach certain things and that's the foundation for all the other conversations i think we're going to probably have later thank you so much micah that was wonderful love having you kind of give that big picture viewpoint of how you were able to utilize this for staff allocation and you know making sure that we're everyone is aligned with their your goals for them and for instruction so now I want to go back to what Stu, um, Stephen was uh, sharing with us earlier about how he was able to build out um, a plan that would fit what they were trying to accomplish as a district with reorganizing, um, you know, all of their offerings in their schools. So Richard, do you mind kind of, uh, not kind of, but showing uh, one of Stephen's schedules? And then uh, Stephen, if you want to, you can kind of talk through you and Richard about what we're looking at here. Sure. And, and just to add on to Micah's um, uh, comments, you know, we started to look at all four schools when we have, um, you know, special education supports, intervention supports, having conversations. We have some students in our elementary schools who are receiving math instruction above grade level, even at our middle school. So sometimes we have to look at those schedules. So we, internally in each building, there's there's that process of having conversations around ensuring that there's that vertical alignment, you know, or horizontal alignment so that everyone in every building and every grade level is getting the same amount of time for the various areas. So Richard, you're, you're happy to pick any, um, any of the schools, probably Katie Markley or, or uh, Sugartown. Um, we actually got kind of what Micah said, when we first started out, if you were to go and see some of our initial uh, uh, schedules, you're going to find that we were a little bit too generous in just saying ELA block. And now we actually separate out. Um, I think that's the next year's. Yeah. So the 20, 23, 24, um, it, we actually call out, you know, readers workshop. We are, we use uh, readers and writers 
workshop framework as well as word study and um, you know responsive uh, classroom is sort of responsive approaches is our e uh, SEL work. So we have a morning meeting that's actually allocated similar to what Micah was saying is we want to make sure that everybody in the entire school, but also everyone across the entire district, we have all four elementary schools, you're going to see that time is allocated. Um, each time you see the A, B, C, D, E, those are just the sections within those classes. Um, and so, and then the teachers are identified so that then the principal can print out their schedule. But we look for we have common planning time within the grade level. So you see that in the specials where they go to rotate 45 minutes. Um, and so a lot of that, you know, when it gets into, um, you, typically we start out with the specialist schedules. Uh, they're the first ones because they're the ones that end up typically getting shared. Um, you might find that sometimes what we look at then is the teacher as Richard's clicking on the teacher, um, teacher piece to give them a chance to see which uh, uh, art, teacher library, you can see that there's a librarian who may be free on day one who can then support at another school. And so then when we go and look at another school that they're supporting, they're blocked in. And then that helps us to look at how can we best utilize the staff that we have? Or if we add a section, you know, sometimes, and many of you probably have this too, is, I mean, our district has been growing, um, probably one of the only districts in this county that in Pennsylvania that's been growing as much as we've seen, but we get late registrations for kindergarten. Um, and so sometimes having to add a section will end up looking at what, how we can do that. And we can do that here, but also know that on day six, the art teacher is available. So now we can have that day to have them maybe cover a section. And this actually happened this past year. We added a section uh, at an elementary school and needed to share with the staff member that at the end of the day, they're going to have to travel. Uh, all the specialists are sort of um, um, asked, in, were asked in one school to support in another building. So without having the ability to really see across all of our schools, um, not only to ensure that we have the consistency, the building principles, as Micah described, kind of have the ability to make some changes However, we've also talked about that any change has a ripple effect. If you change a special or if you change in your one elementary school and that person is needing to be shared, or maybe there's a literacy specialist that we're able to help push into your building based on the number of students that you have, we, we, we sort of look at the elementary schedule uh, as a totality of all four elementary schools. And even one little slight change could have an impact on a special education teacher or could have an, uh, so we, you know, where those special education services are going to be um, supported, as Micah said, our schedules once pro published, then everybody knows what is going to be the schedule and it sort of locks it in after some minor tweaks if needed. Um, and then we get feedback from staff as the year goes on, uh, maybe some you know, uh, placements of certain schedule uh, topics like science or social studies might not be best suited at the end of the day, like some of our principals have done. So they get feedback, um, you know, typically even at the end of the year to then say, we need to do something. Even we had just one quick um, last caveat. We had an, a student who was identified as having, um, he, he could not have, one of our schools has a a, a a gymnasium that does not have air conditioning. He had a cooling vest because he was unable to, um, you know, have, he needed to wear it all day. So we actually had to make sure that his special uh, was at the beginning of the day, each time he was in a different grade level. So sometimes, you know, it, it, we had to help staff understand that, you know, there's a reason why your schedule may not be able to stay the same as it was this year compared to next year, because there are certain things that we have to account for. And we're able to make some changes without then um, within the scheduler that isn't horrible for a principal to have to navigate. Uh, and then uh, those purple things, just to just to highlight the core extensions time is really where then we have those support systems. So then the teachers know where the support systems like literacy specialist or math interventionalists are not overlapped. If, if a principal were to try to overlap them, they may see that there's a conflict. And so then that ensures that our specialists are scheduled um, uh, appropriately.
Okay, so I just want to give the audience a chance to ask any questions or share some thoughts that they have about what you've heard from Stephen so far um, with his uh, uh, district scheduling. Um, so yeah, just want to open the floor to any questions from the audience. Anybody, anybody? <laughs> Not yet, you just thinking? Okay. <laughs> I got a question for Stephen. <laughs> um, I was wondering, Stephen, if you could sort of describe more how you built buy-in amongst your building leaders. Um, as principals, I know on the call, we have district leaders, we have principals, and I think this is really appropriate. If you're, as a principal, you're bringing it to your school to build buy-in with teachers. Is there any sort of specific strategies or steps that were most effectful, effective as you launch DM schedules in your district? Yeah, I think the initial meeting that we had with our admin team, particularly the principals that were going to need to learn how to use the scheduler and manipulate the scheduler, getting everybody in the room and identifying what 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 are our goals with the scheduler, similar to, um, you know, Micah talking about, you know, these are things that we we can we all agree upon these, uh, whatever they are, norms of our schedule? Can we all agree that we believe that due to our needs of our curricular changes that we have to add so many minutes within math uh, and that we consistently provide that for all students across the district because one of our parts of our mission is that all students. So if we're saying that all students receive the supports that they need or that the instruction, we can't have um, jockeying of time based on a preference. Uh, and then so just having that conversation and then really working with the administrators uh, to, to, to help them along the way. It wasn't a come together and then good luck, see you in, you know, see you in September and see you how, see how you do it. We, we kind of worked with them in partnership with DM um, to work with them and have time to call and say, I'm confused about this. You know, that support system, having people just kind of go out there on their own was, was not, was not a good strategy. And we knew that from previous, you know, failures when we've done that before. So we wanted to make sure that principals were supported along the way and understood that the rationale um, for some of those changes. And then also some of the constraints, you know, sometimes some of our principals, by accident, have stumbled into uh, contract negotiation issues, or to not 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 contract negotiations, but contract issues, and they might have scheduled a staff member for not enough time, and then you know they kind of sort of forgot, and it's not their fault, or maybe they were a new administrator, and maybe they you know in a previous district where they were they they practiced a certain way, so it's just being able to get in the room and all all of us know what do we need to do? What, what are the constraints? What do we want to do and make sure we have consistency and really just how that's helpful for everyone, uh, that we're all consistently working together and collaborating was, was really the strength of what we were trying to do. Um, and then as time went on, I can honestly say that as we sort of felt as though, okay, we can start to wean back and maybe the supports aren't there, uh, then sort of all of a sudden, some of the schedules, even with the tool started to a little, you know, uh, adjust and we were like, wait, wait, hold on, we need to come back together. Um, you know, so even though you have the tool just as much as, you know, the tool in and it of itself is not what creates the conditions. It's really that collaboration and ensuring that the, the, the principals and the administrators um, are, are working together in concert with each other. Thank you for that, Stephen. That was wonderful. <laughs> and I love the little dance too. We, we, we'll take a dance moment anytime. <laughs> All right. Um, so, Micah, are you OK with us uh, sharing uh, your schedule and you kind of walking us through how you all use the tool? I'd love to. OK, awesome. So, first of all, Stephen, yours is clean. It looks beautiful, man. Um, my special. That's all. That's not... called Richard. That's Richard. I, I, okay, I don't, my specials don't Richard. look like that. So no. um, but anyways, let's let's jump into mine and I'll talk it through with you. Uh, Richard, I'm okay to talk through SPED too, right? Yep. Okay. All right, so let's start with the master. Um, so there we go. So as you look here, you can talk, see what I was talking about. First of all, you also notice that we have Chinese immersion on my campus. 
Uh, Chinese Immersion has a specialized schedule. If you have uh, immersion programs in your district, uh, you may recognize that we do a 50-50 model. And so that is a flip model. So if you look at 4CI and 5CI, 5CI is not, um, 4CI is a better model right now to look at. But if you look at that, you'll notice that we do, we flip halfway through the day. And so right now the Chinese is taught in the morning for one section and then the other section gets Chinese in the afternoon. And then we are, um, it, no, no, no other way to put it than scrunching up and putting all of the core curriculum in the other half of the day. Okay, there is some overlap with that. Um, if we go back for a second to the main schedule, you'll also notice second grade is a really easy spot to notice it, but they have a nice big block in first grade two of our new adopted ELA program. So there's a foundational skills that, and then vocabulary reading. And if you go into, um, and then the writing section. So it's a very large block of time that that curriculum uh, recommends. And as a district, we've adopted the recommendation. So we, as a school, make sure that we've allotted that. And if you look at some of the others, uh, as Richard's doing that, if you look at some of their grade levels, they have all the components, but sometimes we flip those in different spots. It's not taught conse consecutively. And that's totally fine. That's just part of it. Math similar. If you see there, there's calendar math. And some of you may or may not do that. It's a program uh, that we've adopted at the school. And then we, uh, then our math block is is after that and then some in some of the cases calendar is separated from math just because that's what that grade level preferred um and then you can see we divvied out the specials your steven your specials looked much cleaner than mine but mine is by grade level by teacher so you can see exactly where everybody's at uh one of the things so i think foundationally they're very similar throughout this both school districts um, this is gigantic because I work on this in June and I get this draft out to everybody and then they give, give me some feedback. Um, and then where I do as a, as the school principal is once I get to a place where I'm feeling like I got the feedback for pretty much where we're going to be, then I give my interventionists, my special education, my related services, all of those teachers, the okay to start building their schedule. Um, before we move on, Richard, just pause for one second. Just uh, so, you know, I all, I have Chinese immersion at my school, so that is awesome. So two grade levels, if you have questions about that, you can ask me later. It's a different way that we do it as a school district. But I also have uh, what's called Strive and Best. They're two um, self-contained special education programs on my campus. They're amazing. I love my classes. Uh, we are going from four sections of that to five next year. And those students are also uh in, immersed into our our day and our general education classes as much as possible and so that's why this this master schedule is so important and so at that once we get to a place where we have this master schedule done then we can move into a place where our special education scheduling can start to get built and so all of my interventionists my resource teachers etc they are, yep, if you just hold that, you can see they're all listed there that by their by their category. And then let's go to like speech and language. That's kind of a fun one. Um, and let's go to Laura Tilson. Let's see right in the middle there, Richard. You want to click on her name? Um, so you want to show how you can view their caseload and their yeah, direct so, service, et cetera? Yep. So first of all, um, for district administrators, it's super helpful because uh you want to know how many students your teachers are servicing um, and then what the direct ser service minutes look like and how that is um, allocated and then the average group size. It's it's gigantic because from there, some of my teachers have had really, really low and obviously that's low group size, but they've had really even lower. And so that provides me as the principal opportunities to have conversations with them like, hey, let's talk about that. Um, are we able to sustain that type of group numbers, like that one-on-one -on -one that you're providing? Is that really the, the resource model? Uh, tell me about why we're in that model right now. Let's have those conversations. So been able to have some of those, but I've also been able to have the opposite conversation with my district leaders regarding, hey, you know what? We have X number of students and their caseloads and numbers are X number of minutes. 
This is what my special education resource teachers are doing right now. These are their schedules. These are their number of students and that their gr groups look like, let's talk through, do you, do we think that we need to add staffing to this? Um, and it's a really powerful conversation. That's something I could never have before with my Excel. So I think this is a fun one to, to look at. Um, Laura Tilson's a speech pathologist. And so she has, as you can tell, a lot of students on our caseload. We pull, Richard works really closely with my district. We pull from our student database system, um, student uh, needs and caseloads and minutes. And from there, we're able to build uh, and the teachers can build their schedules. So yeah, if you see this, he's clicking on right now a student, okay? That student, Harper, I know that's the, that both of those students very well. The, on the left is their homeroom schedule. So I, I'm i not sure how it works in your school district, but when I got here, it was, hey, Dr. Korb, um, I am... I'm, I'm, uh, I need some time. And I, I usually we have about two weeks to make our schedules. Cause we've got to work with all the teachers and see when it works for them to have their kids and all this stuff. Right. And so I was that, that, that was that as a principal and everything just kind of drove me crazy. Um, and so I just don't think it was efficient use of, of staffing. And I think our, our students get, um, students could be better serviced than that. And so with that, um, once I get the master schedule in June done. I can send this out to them and they can start building their schedule because if hold just click on one and just hold it there for a second, Richard. So right now, Harper, right? They get pulled out of science social studies. That's a district norm that we've decided that's okay. And so that's a great time to service them. That had no conversations with the classroom teacher outside of them looking into DM schedule to do that. There, there was no delay. Because the master was done, they could be looking and, and they could be servicing and looking at their child and when they're needed. So we really try to approximately around the second day of school begin servicing the students, which is incredible. Um, that's a huge difference from what the practice was. And so I'm really, really excited about that. And I will tell you, you asked a great question to Stephen before, and I'll answer it for as a school building principal. Richard worked with us on our first year of the rollout of the special education piece to train my teachers on how to build their schedule. And then we had a follow-up day with them about questions and answers, right? All right. So they got up and there wasn't pushback. They were really like, okay, give me a tool. I'm happy to use it. I, I don't really like what I'm using right now. It's not really efficient. I don't know how to share a schedule, et cetera. This is all super easy, very shareable, et cetera. And then what happened is now on an annual basis, we just do like the Q and A part because my my staff has stayed consistent. So Richard just pops in and, and we 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 do that. I will I'll tell you though, everyone on campus noticed that their kids got serviced earlier. That was exciting because everyone was like, "Oh, they're in my room. They're already in, they're already doing it." The kids are getting what they need. And we have the assessment data already moving into the school year. And none of that's none of that's questions. We already know where the kids are at. So they're building relationships and rapport with their students on their caseload in the first week of school. Um, I love that. I think that's super exciting for me. I, I think that's really helpful to classroom teacher too, because that provides them with the opportunity to you know, have their students' needs met earlier than they were before. Is that helpful? Super helpful. <laughs> Thank you. And I mean, just adding all of that detail and having us be able to see, you know, what you were talking about, I think was um, extremely important and helpful to the discussion. I, and I apologize, but I think I missed Brad earlier. Brad, did you have a question? I, I did, but I didn't I didn't know if, if I should wait, if more would get to it. It's just a pretty general question. So you can shut me down if we're going to get to there later. Yeah. I'm seeing the visuals here and they're wonderful. I, my question is about, I guess, the, the tool, the software. Like, is it um, is it is it just a tool that, that you're entering and you're able to manipulate it visually to see it in a bunch of different ways? Or is this a tool where you put in all your parameters as in 
60 minutes for foundational skills and reading, 30 minutes for flexible small groups, 75 minutes for math, so on and so on, and mm -hmm. then hit go. And it's using algorithms to create a sample schedule that then you can manipulate from there. Does that make sense? Yeah, so I can answer that. Uh, it, it's the former. It's it's a tool where you put the parameters and you're able to manipulate the blocks that are already sized by the minutes around. Um, we believe that you're the specialist and you know your school and you know the constraints you're dealing with. It, it is not. You push a button and you get a schedule. There is a magical place where you can push a button and it will automatically create your specials rotation for you in a matter of seconds. Um, so that's one place. And if you are looking for someone where you just download the parameters of the schedule that you're trying to build your dreams and wishes, we do have our team who can build the schedule for you in the program for an additional cost. So just wanted to share those two highlights as well. So there's a lot of shortcuts, like Alice said, for example, for your specials rotation, if you specify which specials you have and which how many class or in each grade, you can push a button and get the specials rotated. Now that might be not be exactly what you're looking for, but it gets you like 90% of the way there. Also, all the individual teacher schedules are automatically created based on the homeroom and the special schedules. So you're saving time by not having to update all the all the staff schedules. Those are generated automatically based on the main schedule. It's not yeah. exactly your question, Brad, but I'm gonna answer it. A question you may be thinking and because this is what I was thinking this is why I was, I was a late adopter you I'm not sure your your comfort level with making schedules you may feel as though you you already have a system that works just fine um I was very comfortable making schedules and I was quicker the first year to make my schedule by myself than using the DM schedule I'll be honest with that however now it is quicker for me to use the scheduling tool than it is for me, would be for me to build my own schedule. And I would never be able to build it with the components I just explained. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, you know, and it's kind of, it's a collaborative process here in which I'm doing various parts with, you know, my, my coaches kind of help setting up our parameters in terms of I'm a 4K through second grade building, so we have five or six sections at each grade level. Um, used to be a K-5 school with three sections apiece, and uh, since we made this transition, it's a little bit tougher. But if we have every first grade class, five of them teaching, reading at the same time, that makes it difficult for our coaches to be able to coach them. So there's certain things that we want staggered. Um, you know, there are certain things we want reading before writing, that type of stuff. We try to make, kind of set those parameters as, as, a, a, as my coaches. Uh, that team and then we involve uh, teachers in in placing their specific you know blocks in there their math their reading uh, but before all that we do our specialist schedule you know PE and music and art and all that kind of stuff and that's just the it's just a puzzle it's Tetris I don't mind that work I kind of like the visual activity to it it's the the strategizing of when you know when reading is when writing is and and all of that uh, type of thing there's there's a lot of factors i didn't i didn't i didn't expect that there's necessarily a software that would make everything come out and eliminate every conflict that you could possibly have because i feel like that's too many things to do it's not like it's not just a math algorithm like high school or middle school special uh, scheduling is um because we don't have nice neat first hour second hour third hour so i get that it would be a magical thing and i pay a lot of money if you could have <laughs> made it like that yeah. it took account but i do like the various ways of visualizing it to see where those conflicts are yeah and brad we hear that all be, the time oh go ahead micah i do think you jumped on a idea that richard might be able to demonstrate to you he was showing it a little bit before but um within the software when you're building it you can easily see if there's a conflict so i i richard you might want to i'm sure you can demonstrate that much better than i can on your Uh, let me see. Yeah, so um, the type of conflicts you could see, for example. Uh... You could click on validate and finalize, and the system will let you know what's working about your schedule, places to adjust. So that's one option. And then the other thing I think would be helpful, Richard, is to highlight the different scenarios. So we know that scheduling is like a science and an art, right? Like it's not just a formula, like you said, Brad. And so what a lot of our schools will do is, you know, they have an idea for 
creating a schedule where you might stack our science and social studies, but before you go full on into building the schedule, you kind of want to see the benefits and the trade-offs. So you can build different versions of schedules, as many as, as you would like, as you're exploring for the future, even like semester one or semester two, to really think through the benefits and trade-offs of different scheduling options as well. Yeah, so the, the, there's different types of conflicts we will highlight, like if some specials overlap over, over some other periods um, and then in the specials as well. Um, right now, you can see if a specials instance has been scheduled outside of your special, um, you know, sort of a uh, planning period, and as well as if you um, schedule the same teacher for two for the same period uh, at two different specials, or you know, the same classroom for two specials that will highlight as well. I don't want to uh, mess up uh, Micah's schedule. <laughs> <laughs> Remove something by accident, but those are all things that that are checked and. There's also check and balances. For example, here we can see that um, all the library instances that needed to be scheduled for specials have a check mark, which means they're all on the schedule. So if you forgot to schedule a classroom, that would be highlighted here really quickly. And you can, um, I think we talked a little bit about uh, the staff utilization and how many periods each teacher has been assigned to, as well as how many minutes each student and each classroom is receiving. So there's all these check and balances um, around the schedule that uh, that are really helpful. And and if I may add another thing that uh, Richard sort of alluded to when he mentioned that, you know, changing Micah's schedule, uh, some of our principals have liked the ability to maybe, you know, they have an idea, they copy it, they copy the schedule, and then they play around with things so as not to impact an addition, you know, a previous schedule, but just they have ideas of what they want to do, or maybe there's something that's coming up that they need to adjust, but they just want to have an opportunity to kind of brainstorm. And so having the ability to copy a, a, a schedule, work on uh, another idea so as not to affect, usually then, you know, we, we have some administrators who have a a very long list of drafts and then they forget which one they, they they like the most but it at least gives them a chance to kind of play around and not feel like oh if i change this it's gonna it's gonna ruin um you know what i what what did i think last week i i, I want to go back to that one and so they can you know especially in the summer when they're working through things that's been that's been helpful as well Okay, would anyone else um, like to share a question or any observations that they have? Even, you know, sharing some of the, um, um, your scheduling scenario for your own schools and, you know, asking for, uh, you know, some ideas around how the tool could support that. that feel free to do that. No one wants to share. Oh. <laughs> Do you know I always have questions because yeah, I love learning about it. how scheduling is going in our districts. Yeah. Um, my question for both Micah and Steven is, you know, what's next for you and your partnership with DM Schedules? Like what new ideas are you dreaming of and thinking about trying out in your school or in the schools in your district? Um, just to give everyone on the call some potential thoughts around uh, the possibilities that our scheduler can help you all achieve. Steven, I'll let you go first. Oh, okay. Thanks, thanks, Micah. Um, I think I think what we didn't anticipate, we sort of did something, as I alluded to maybe earlier, that we didn't realize how the scheduler, when we had experience with the elementary, the superintendent and I were brainstorming as we started to open up a new school or as things the district was changing, or even recently, we not only are opening up a new school, uh, changing a seven, eight schedule. Uh, that Richard has helped us uh, on both of those, but then also the board balanced the elementary schools, which means that the sections in those elementary schools are now all changing. And so we're able to, with the scheduler, really start to, you know, maybe get a jump start on things that in the past, maybe we would have said, okay, well, we'll get together and plan for this. But as I mentioned earlier, we were, we were starting to schedule a five, six school even before the, the ground was breaking on building the school. 
um, because we knew that the school had a structure that was going to support students in houses and things to that effect. So we knew that the, the way we were constructing the school was it had a certain um, instructional approach. So we started to plan for that. We started to then have conversations at our 7-8. So we were really starting to say, how could uh, DM Group and, and with Richard's support start to, in essence, plan forward, uh, give, us, give us a window into thinking through not only the, 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 the structure of the schedule, but the challenges and constraints that we maybe didn't think about prior. Uh, really having, I think, the help that um, I've, I've appreciated is, you know, oftentimes people in our board, um, and maybe this is just commonplace in education, what is the neighboring district doing? What are they doing? And I, and I tend to want to look beyond just Chester County, Pennsylvania, because sometimes this is my philosophy is that we all kind of then just have group think without really realizing we have group think. And we all start doing things very similarly as our neighbors because we're compared to our neighbors. What I would want is someone from outside of my area, which Richard has been to say, hey, these are the things you can think about. These are the things that I've seen other districts do. And I've seen, you know, having the experience to work with other districts like Micah's and others it tends to then bring ideas that we may never have, you know, known through Richard, you know, maybe Richard isn't telling us, oh, well, this district did this, but it just gives us that window of opportunity to start thinking beyond just ourselves and our locale uh, and hearing about what things are happening. So that that's, that's been probably the best thing that we've seen too, is to say, well, you have these constraints, but here's one option. So right now we're looking at our elementary schedule next year and we're kind of talking about we, we may have to Frankenstein people, meaning like an elementary school is getting this art teacher. And I, I don't know, Richard, you didn't name that, I did. But, you know, like we're taking this art teacher from this building and covering on days one and two here. And, and so art might be Frankenstein. And that, then that's a question to say, do we want it to be that? It's not to say that it will, but do we want it to be that? And do we as a district feel as though that's the approach we wanna go into, but having all of these things starting to uh, germinate in ideas way before we end up having to make the decision is just so much more helpful for us because then we can really sort of proof of concept it, put it out there, think this through and let the software just help us and to say, what, what do we want it? What, what do we want to be? And does it match our mission? Does it match our goals? Does it match our what our community wants? And then ultimately put it sometimes in front of the board and say, is this what you want? If it's not, and you want us to hire more people, then you support us when we have to now come to the tax base and say, we need to increase our staff. So it just has, you know, those are all things, the forward thinking aspect and being able to play around with what it will look like just has saved us time um, uh, tenfold. By the way, uh, thanks for the kind words, but I'm not the only ex uh, scheduling expert at DM Group. We have a team working here. I just happen to have worked with Stephen and, my, and Micah quite a bit, uh, but uh, I'm not the only person working. <laughs> we love Richard, so. <laughs> Micah, yeah, go ahead and share. So on my side, I, I alluded to this before, but we are we are adopting a new SEL curriculum. So that will impact my schedule this year. So that's just a real nut and bolt piece of it. So excited about looking at the that opportunities and making sure that we're supporting students with that new adoption as a school district. And so that's definitely going to impact us. I, I, I think looking back on thinking about just avenues that this helps so much with, we were using it pre pre COVID land. I know no one likes to talk about COVID. But um, during COVID, we switched schedules frequently just because of the situation we were all in, right? And so I just think back on that, like this, this made life easy because I, during that time, I sent out a link to my staff and they're like, okay, now I know what I'm doing. Zero questions, literally like we're good. It wasn't like, it, it made it like, okay, we've done this before. This is, this is the new schedule around to that. Okay. A few months later, here's a new link. This is the new schedule. And so I think like moving forward, I am, I feel very comfortable with 
and my staff has, like they love this tool and they feel as though they know where everything's at and they know how to use it. I, I sat down with my leadership team a month ago and I'm like, give me some feedback. What do we want different for the scheduling next year? And they're like, we're good with it. I'm like, no, seriously, like, what do you want different? They're like, we're good. Like, that's, we're really happy with it, actually. We know it can't be perfect, but this year's was really good. And so, like, uh, any of you that have been principals, our principals or administrators, like, that that conversation doesn't always go that way. And so um, I just feel as though everyone knowing what everyone's doing and that transparency that is provided in it has led to that place where they everyone knows, everyone gives a little bit. And so, and they're, they're thankful with what they're at right now. One interesting tidbit is uh, I had a discussion with the principal and what he does every year is he sits with his uh, grade level teachers and he puts them schedules on a projector and they build the schedules together as a team. And he wants to un people to understand on his team that not everybody can teach reading in the morning because that will have an impact on special education that can pull students out for the half half the day, so he sp spent spends you know a couple hours with all his team, kind of waffing off the schedule, on the big screen, which is really I found that interesting. All right, thank you all for you know staying with us um, during this time, Micah, Stephen. Thank you, <laughs> that was wonderful. I mean, I. Hearing from our partners is, is just such a unique and empowering experience because I remember teaching, you know, having that comparison before and during the pandemic. And yes, it was a nightmare trying to, you know, figure out all the components, you know, make sure you were still supporting and not losing your mind in the process. So <laughs> I'm glad that you were able to speak to how DM, I wish we had a DM schedules when I was, you know, uh, supporting students. So yeah, but anywho, didn't mean to go on a tangent, but thank you all so much for joining us today. Alice and myself, we're here to support, you know, uh, more personal one-on-one -on -one conversations with you. If you want to reach out and have some, um, you, you want to see more of the product, you want to, you know, really talk through your situation and we can help support um, some of you I've already, you know, been talking to, Alice has been talking to. Hi, you know who you are. Um, so <laughs> I just want to, you know, extend that offer to everyone else as well. You know, we're here to support you, not just, you know, as someone who's buying a product, but no, we actually want to have a partnership with you. And I'm so glad that Stephen and Micah really spoke about how they were collaborating um, with Richard and not just, oh, he was doing this or I had to do this and no one, you know, was talking to each other. We try to eliminate that um, when we partner with your district and with your schools. So Again, thank you. Uh, we'll be sending out some follow-up information. We'll have a recording. We'll get you that scheduling guide as soon as possible. And again, you are now our friends, whether you like it or not. So let's stay in touch. <laughs> all righty. So we will see you all later. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.